Hello, Church One. I'm so glad you could join us online today. We would like to invite you to um, our Sunday service every Sunday at 1015 6200 North Charles Street, uh, right across from Eddie's. We'd love for you to be there in person to see your face and to uh, be in the community together. So um, as we look at this passage today, today we are going to look at Matthew 11. Um, and although it's not following the Genesis passages that Mike is, has been talking through, um, it, it is very much related to what we've been talking about, right? And Mike has been talking about this person, Abraham, who's this person of faith. And last week he talked about his trusting in the midst of testing. And I even wrote this quote down because it, it was really helpful to me. He said um, that we can trust God we can trust in the character of God, even when we don't understand his ways. And I, that was really helpful for me. Um, so we're, chapter 11 and, and Matthew, we're going to look at um, a little bit of unbeliefs, a little bit of con wanting control, a little bit of doubt. Um, and so, you know, all things that we've all dealt with, right? So um, let, me, let me read the scripture and pray and then we'll dig in. So this is Matthew eleven sixteen to 19, and then 25 to 30. It says, to what can I compare this generation? They're like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We, pl we played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, he was a demon. He's a fanatic. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they said, he's a glutton and a, and a drunkard a friend of tax, co tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. And then 25 to 30 says, at, at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learn, learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Father except the Son. I mean, no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal. And then 28 to the end, we all know this. It says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's pray. God, thank you for your word. Um, thank you that it is living and active and it teaches us, it challenges us, it encourages us, it inspires us. And so, Lord, I do pray that as we walk through this chapter 11 of Matthew, that you and your Holy Spirit would just speak to each of us. Um, I think you have a word for us, and Lord, I pray that we would be open and, um, and receiving of it. And so we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the passage is kind of broke up into three sections. And so we're going to take a look at each of those three sections. Um, and we're going to look at some like being child, childish, being childlike, and then finding rest. And so before we jump into it, I'd love to give you a little background on Luke 11. So um, previously in, in Luke like 8 through 9, I think Jesus performed 10 miracles. So he performed these 10 miracles and then... He gathers his disciples together and he teaches them and he trains them and he prepares them and then he sends them out. And this is when John sends this question. So to the beginning of the, of the chapter, it says, um, John the Baptist, who was in prison, heard these things. He sent his disciples to Jesus to ask this question. Are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? And I find it interesting that John, you know, John the Baptist, who declared Jesus as the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, who baptized Jesus with water, who said he's not even worthy to touch his, you know, his sandals. He's the one asking the question, like, hey, are you the guy? Because I thought you were the guy. Um, but he's questioning. And I find it in interesting because a lot of commentators will have said that John is in this place of doubt. And it's because he does see the works of Jesus. He sees all the things that Jesus is doing. And he thinks, this should be the guy, right? But in John's opinion, 
he's just not doing it fast enough. Like he's not moving on it. It's kind of like, Jesus, you're slow to move. Like, let's get this done. What are you doing? And so he's asking like, hey, just curious, like, are you the guy or should I be expecting someone else? Because I was expecting something else. And so I just find that, that interesting. And I think we probably have all been there, right? We probably all thought like, I just thought this was going to be different than, than what I'm experiencing right now. And I'm sure it has something to do with the fact that John's in prison and he's probably like, hey, could you help a man out? You know, like, it'd be great not to be in prison. And so, so the rest of the chapter 11 is literally Jesus answering this question. The whole chapter, he's answering the question, are you the one that we have been waiting for or should we look for someone else? And so he's answering that question as we'll see throughout this passage. So we'll read um, verses 16 to 18. It says, to, to, what, to what can I compare this generation? They're like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We play the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating or drinking. And they said, he's, he's a demon. And then the son of man came eating and drinking. And they said, he's a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. I thought this was an e- interesting passage because Jesus is basically telling us that he's basically saying that we are like um, or these people are like peevish children in a snit. Like they're literally like, he won't play my game. So I'm just not going to play. Like they're being childish about, <laughs> about like what they want. And if, if I don't have it my way, then it's no way. And they're going to like pout in the corner. Well, you know, Jesus is saying, listen, you want it your way, right? We give you John, he's a prophet, and you're like, he's too fanatical. We, we don't like that. We give Jesus, who comes eating and drinking and hanging out, and you're like, he's a glut, glutton and a, and a drunkard. We don't like that. And basically what Jesus is saying is, you want what you want, right? Like, you want what you want. I have an expectation of this is who Jesus should be, and you're not meeting it. And so that's a problem for me, Right? <laughs> And Jesus is saying, it does, it, basically, it doesn't matter who we send. It doesn't matter what it looks like, who it is, what they say. You're not going to follow because you don't believe, right? You want control, and you want, and you want what you want. And Jesus is like, I don't play that game. I am who I am. You don't get to pick and choose. And when you walk with Jesus, you no longer have control. He is you know, unapologetically in control when you give him your life. And so, you know, it's interesting. Um, it's basically, you know, they're, they're saying like, you're not what I expected, Jesus. You're not at all what I expected. And this is what I want. And I just think it's interesting that of all people, John the Baptist would say that because even throughout history, you know, all through God's history, he uses people that are unexpected. He uses pe- the unlikely person, right? I mean, even Abraham, Abraham and his wife are old. And God says, I'm going to build a nation through you and your heirs. And they're like, really? How's that going to happen? Right? Jesus um, or God, you know, sends an angel to Gideon who's hiding in a threshing floor. And the angel goes to him and says, hey, uh, Gideon, you mighty warrior. And Gideon's like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm hiding. I don't. I'm not a mighty warrior. I am the least of the least clan. I'm the least person in the least clan. You don't want me. And Jesus, God's like, yeah, you're the guy. You're the guy. You're the mighty warrior. And even John, like when you think about it, like John is the least likely guy, right? He's wearing sheepskin and a leather belt and he, he walks around the desert. He says a message nobody really wants to hear and he eats honey. Like he's weird, right? Like he's, he also is not, ex- not expected, right? But when we find our, ourselves in a place in our lives where we see that Jesus is not what we expected, it can be a scary place. It can be a surprising place for us. And so what I've tried to do as I've read through this these last couple of weeks was really just look at like, what does that, what does that mean? Like for me, I'm just asking the question for me, like where is Jesus showing up in my life unexpected or not showing up in a way that I expected? And where is there, is there an opportunity for me to trust here? And so I would just encourage you to think about that. There's not like 
some great grand question to tie all these together, but I thought they were challenging each in their own way. And so at this part, we're, you know, we're talking about being childish. We want our way and how dare you not give me your way. You're never going to be what I want. And Jesus is like, that's right. I don't change. I don't change, but you can. And so um, I'm curious if there's a place in your life where you feel like um, God is showing up maybe differently than you had expected. So, and then I, uh, we'll move on to verses 25 and 27. This is kind of like the childlike place. It says, at this time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. So this is interesting, too, because it's a pretty intense statement, let's be honest. Like, for the hearers of that day, this statement, Jesus could not be clear that he is saying, I am the way. I am the one. You're wondering if I'm the one? Yes, I am the one, the only one, right? Um, And no one before him, no one ever after him in history has ever made this kind of claim. Like to the hearers of that day, this would have been uh, blasphemous, like shocking to them. Um, But Jesus is basically saying like, listen, um, you've hidden these things from the wise, but the young children and the little children and and the young at heart, the needy and the desperate, they hear it and they accept it, right? Um, and so the message is, is very um, simple. It's so simple that I think it's confounding to the wise. I think it's too simple for why, <laughs> the wise people. And it's surprisingly expected for, the, for, the, for children, right? It's like um, John three sixteen. you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Like, that seems kind of easy. It's like, so you're just telling me, like, I just have to believe. That's it. I just believe. He's like, yeah, that's it. Well, that's just too easy. Well, is it? Is that easy? Like, first of all, I don't think that's very easy. Um, but secondly, I'm wondering, like, it doesn't make sense to them, but I'm wondering why, like, why would it make it harder be better? Does that make sense? Like I hear that a lot from people like, that's just too simple. It's too easy. Why would it be that? It's gotta be harder than that. You're like, why? Why would it have to be harder? Why does it being harder make more sense to you? I don't understand. I think it's very clear that Jesus is saying like, you can't do this. You need me. I am the only way. <laughs> I am the only way. And um, so it's just, it was interesting because again, it's a place where um, we, we're, maybe we're overthinking something. We're like, this is too simple. Yeah, it is simple. It's really hard to do. It's a very simple concept and it's really hard to live out, right? Putting all your trust in Jesus and letting him lead you through your life. You're like, yeah, that's hard, but it's also super simple. And so it's confusing. Um, so again, it's, it's, for me, personally, as I've walked through this, I, I have asked myself the, qu- the question, like, what, is there a place in my life? Am I dealing with something right now? God, would you show me places that I'm overthinking? That I'm thinking, this is way too easy. Or, you know, this, God couldn't possibly want me to do this because I like it or anything like that. Like, is there a place that I'm overthinking or that I'm not accepting the grace that God has given me? And so that was, that was kind of my thought on, um, on this piece of being like childlike, that there's a sense of, you know, if you're wise, you kind of miss it because you're overthinking it. You're thinking too hard. And Jesus is just like, like this next verse says, like, come to me, just come to me. If you're weary and burdened, and yes, we all are, right? So let's look at this last section. It's like, where do we find rest? And everybody, if you know any verses in Matthew 11, it's these verses, right? It says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. 
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I'm going to read that again because I feel like that is like a cool breeze to my soul on a hot, humid Baltimore day. Um, so let's read that again. It's come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's what we want to hear, right? Like, that's great news. Like, like how many of us feel weary and burdened and like we're carrying a weight that we just want to let go of and we des we're in desperate need of rest. I'm sure all of us have a place, if not our whole lives, a place in our life where we feel that way. Um, and it's interesting because you've probably seen a yoke, you know, um, you know, it's a big, long wooden like board um, with two like metal pieces, round loop kind of pieces in it. And basically what you do is you put the head of the beast of burden in these holes and then they would pull and they would do the hard work. And um, interesting, like there was always, it, always the two oxen, there was always two oxen, right? They were always kind of together. There was never alone. It was like, not only were you yoked to the yoke, but you were yoked to something else as well. Um, and so, you know, it's interesting when you, when you read it, you think like to call those who are weary and heavy burdened and heavy laden to take a yoke upon them. It seems like adding like affliction to the afflicted, right? Like, oh, now you, I'm already heavy, you know, I'm already burdened and weary. And now you want me to take, on, take on this yoke too. Um, but I think the key lie, the, the key lies in the word my, right? It's my yoke. Jesus says, take my yoke. And in doing so, in the way this commentaries, like all of them agree, that he's not saying take on something that wasn't already there. He's saying, you're already yoked to something. You're already carrying some burden. T take that off. Take on my, my yoke. Take on my yoke. It is easy. It is light. He's, he's not saying... Um, yeah, he's saying you're already yoked to something, it's art, and it's wearing you out. It's exhausting you, right? He's not asking you to take on something more. He's saying, you're, if you're under my yoke, um, no, he's saying you're under a yoke, which is making you weary, right? It's making you weary. It's making you tired. It's a heavy burden. You shake it off and try mine. Try mine. And this, um, Jesus is saying, like, become my yoke mate. Right. So. So, yeah, we would be holding a yoke, but he would be the, per the person we'd also be yoked to. Right. He would be the one walking alongside us and through our lives and through um, all the things that we walk through in our lives. Um, so I think he's he's kind of saying, become my yoke mate and learn how to pull the load by working beside me. Like, watch me watch how I do it. And simply Jesus just simply being there, you know, he's carrying probably most of the weight and it helps us knowing that he's there for the stuff that we have to carry right it makes it easier for us um and it's you know to be able to to imagine that through every circumstance in life jesus is walking beside us right jesus is walking beside us you're not alone you're not going through it by yourself you know life is hard and who better to walk through it with you than the one who created it right? The one who created it, the one who knows you inside and out, the one who like has a plan for you. Like who better to have as a yoke mate than the God of the universe walking next to you? Um, I mean, it, it's, that would be pretty amazing, right? To be able to walk um, along with Jesus. And he invites us to do that. He's saying, listen, this control that you're trying to have, uh, all these things you're trying to do, they're killing you. They're, it's a burden. It is heavy. Just give it up. It's too heavy for you to carry. And he's saying, he's inviting us, come to me. I know the way. <laughs> I'm here to help. You know, I walk beside you. I carry you. I love you. You know, the God of the universe became a man and walked on this earth so we would know what God is like, so that we would know how 
how God would want us to live, that we would be able to see him. And ultimately, he died on a cross to forgive us our sins, to pay a debt that we couldn't pay, to provide us with freedom that we could never get on our own. And he's saying, walk with me, walk with me. It's my burden is, is light. My burden is easy. Trust me and walk with me. And so, you know, as we, as we look at these, you know, um, is there a place in your life where you feel like I'm carrying a heavy burden that is not mine to carry? Is there something that um, you need to lay at the feet of Jesus and say, I can't do this. I need you because he's there and he wants to, and he will. And so just, you know, as we look at that over this chapter 11, you just see that like God is saying like, yeah, I'm not probably who you expected. Like there's probably a lot of things that are unexpected that are going to happen to you. And, and he's like, yeah, you might be overthinking things, right? Like I'm the guy. I think you're overthinking. You think it's too easy. It's not too easy. I think you're overthinking it. And then he's saying, come to me. Are you looking for some rest? Are you looking to lay down these things that are like just bogging you down? Just come to me, you know, and I will give you rest. So to conclude, I just want to read the same verses in um, the message version. I think they're beautiful and I think they really help sum up what we've kind of talked about here. It says this, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep, Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Let's pray. God, we do thank you for your word. We do thank you for this word that um, just clearly states that you love us, that you are um, our savior, that you walk along with us and desire that. Um, And Lord, I pray that you would reveal in our hearts, you know, areas in our lives that we can um, unburden ourselves from and and give to you and trust you. And so Lord, we're just grateful and um, we praise you And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.